Hi, good morning. It's Dinosaur George answering all of your questions that you send to me at dinosaurgeorge.com. Uh, let me apologize for how stuffy my head sounds today. I, I just had sinus surgery and it's kind of clearing up, so forgive me if uh, I sound a little muffled. Let's get into it. Um, Christina from Abilene, Texas wrote me and said, I have a nine-year-old who wants to be a paleontologist. What can I do to help him to his goal? Christina, there's a couple of different things you can do, but I would say at his age, the most important thing he can do today is to continue to read as much about the subject as he can. Take him to the library, let him go online, uh, go to used bookstores. Those are great places to get some great bargains on books. The reason why I say that is sometimes people go into college to become a paleontologist and they will oftentimes leave with a very narrow idea and set of beliefs. If they don't really understand how broad paleontology is and they don't understand other people's points of view, they have a tendency to believe strictly what their professor uh, may have told them. And so I always encourage them to get all the different points of view and don't walk in with a, with a one mindset and fight tooth and nail for that mindset unless you've really looked at all the other options. So at this particular point, get him to study as much as he can, get as many books as you can get to him. And now's the time to begin to start looking at area schools. Uh, you guys live in Abilene. Uh, there's a great group of folks in Abilene who work, I think, through the Grace Museum there. I've been to that museum a couple of times. It's a great group of folks that work with some of the local high schools, I believe, and they actually go out into the field and dig. So uh, you'll want to get in touch with those guys because as your son gets a little older, he's going to want to absolutely be associated with them. Okay, uh, Ryan from New Lenox, Illinois wrote and said, could T-Rex swim? That's, cool. uh, that's a cool question. My opinion is yes, absolutely T-Rex could swim. In fact, I think probably all of the dinosaurs could swim, maybe with the exception of the ankylosaurs. They're just so heavy, I don't, I don't know if they could do, I don't know if they could swim or not, but maybe they could. You know, we often don't think of, of dinosaurs as being animals that swim. Now, Tyrannosaurus rex didn't make his living in the ocean or in the lakes or rivers, so it's not like he was looking to go out and go swimming for fun or he wanted to take a bath. Um, but when times required it, animals need to, need to cross water. And uh, T-Rex is, is uh, in my opinion, certainly capable of doing so. Uh, he probably would have done a, done a version of the doggy paddle, where I think he may have used his tail kind of sort of as a rudder. I will tell you this, there's a predator named Ceratosaurus, who some people believe that dinosaur may have been an incredible swimmer. And Ceratosaurus and Tyrannosaurus all come from the same general family, which is theropods. And if one could swim, possibility exists that they could all swim. So good question, man. Uh, my friend Connor Lewis, Raptor, uh, in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, wrote me and said, uh, just a quick question, what's your secret? I mean, how did you become such a great teacher? <laughs> I'm flattered, I'm flattered, Raptor. Especially the little kids. I can kind of explain things to adults without getting technical, but I don't know how to do it with kids. Any tips? Yeah, th that's, that's, that's a good point. I'm glad you're thinking about that, Raptor, because it's important for people like you, who know a lot about dinosaurs, to share that with young kids. It's very important. Uh, you have no idea how much you motivate them by giving them information. I would say this. I've learned over my years of doing this that kids are much more sophisticated than we give them credit for. Uh, they're much more advanced. I never talk down to kids. Um, that's the most important thing. Don't go in thinking that they can't understand what you say. Now the flip side is don't go in thinking that they've graduated college and that they can understand every terminology. I would simply do this. I never use the word vertebrae when I'm talking to little tiny kids. I use the word backbone. I don't use the word femur when I'm talking to little tiny kids. I use the word leg bone. Uh, those kind of things. And that makes it, they make it, it makes it understandable for the kids when you take your information and you convert it to things that they understand in their everyday world. Uh, but listen, I'm very flattered that you, uh, you, you said those kind comments. I appreciate it very much. Uh, now to Dakin in Pina, uh, Pima, Arizona. Uh, Dakin, uh, thank you so much, by the way, for put it, putting in parentheses how to pronounce your name. I get so many names, and, and I'm not very good at pronouncing them. So Dakin, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, and by the way, I used to live in Scottsdale, Arizona. I know where Pima is, and I love it out there. He wants to know, 
that uh, I know that dromaeosaurids such as Utah Raptor or Deinonychus were huge, but the so-called Megaraptor was the biggest. I've heard that Megaraptor might have been too big to be a dromaeosaurus, so they classified it as a type of allosaur. Is this true? And then he writes, P.S., I've done a school report on you. Well, Dakin, I'm, I'm flattered, flattered that you would do a school report on me, and I hope you got a good grade, and if you didn't, you give me your teacher's name and phone number, and I'll make a phone call, my friend, and we'll rectify that. I'm kidding you. Uh, Dakin, here's the thing about Megaraptor. First, this is a... Uh, this is a claw from a Megaraptor. This is, this is its uh, thumb claw, its hand claw. Um, it's huge. Megaraptor is a big dude, absolutely. When this dinosaur was first discovered, I gotta tell you, I was incredibly excited because I went, oh my gosh, look at the size of this giant raptor, or as you said, dromaeosaurid, which is the cor uh, per correct pronunciation for those, that family of dinosaurs. But they began to study, and the latest information I have is that they recognize that this claw does not belong to a member of the dromaeosaurid or raptor family. They now believe that Megaraptor is actually related to Baryonyx and Spinosaurus, and that perhaps its giant claws were ideally suited for catching fish and not for ripping open giant prey. But uh, no matter what it is, I gotta tell you one thing, when you look at the claw and compare it to the claw of, say, a Utah Raptor, Utah Raptor, uh, let me see, I've got a Utah Raptor claw right here. When you look at this claw of a Utah Raptor, one of the things that, that you'll see is that it is very, very thin and very, very blade-like. But when you hold it up in comparison to a Megaraptor claw, look how much thicker Megaraptor claw is. I don't know if you can see this very well, but look how thick a Megaraptor claw is. So that's where the concept comes that, uh, uh, that these, uh, these dinosaurs were not using their claws in a raptor-like style. They were using them to catch fish. Okay, listen, thank you guys so much for writing to me. I appreciate it. Again, I apologize for my head being a little stopped up for my sinus surgery. If you've got a question you'd like to ask, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page and leave me your question. Remember, I get thousands of questions every month, and I can't always answer all of them, but I try. Uh, while you're at the website, remember, join our mailing list. Once a month, we send out a free newsletter. It's loaded with cool stuff. Thank you guys so much, and uh, have a great day.